we're now in our statistical unit. And our statistical question is a question where you're going to get answers that are going to have more than one response. So if you did a statistical survey or you did a um, experiment, that would be a form of a statistical question. So a dot plot is one way that we can show our numeric data. So it's a graph that shows numeric data and their frequencies. So here is an example. We're going to make a dot plot of this example, and we're going to answer some questions about this dot plot. 11 students shoot baskets for 30 seconds. Make a dot plot of their results. So if we recorded their results, here's all their results here below. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a dot plot. So a dot plot is kind of like a, a bar graph with dots and we do it on a number line. So the first thing we need to do is make our line for a number line. And we need to look at the scale of our data. So we need to look at our smallest and our lowest number so we can figure out where, how we need to number our number line. So our lowest number is three and our highest number is seven. So we need to make our number line where we've got five numbers, three, four, five, six, seven, And we're going to go ahead and title it on baskets made because that's what these numbers mean. They mean the baskets that were made. Three baskets, four baskets, five baskets, six and seven baskets. All right. Now we're going to make a dot above each of our data results. And when we make our dots, we're going to space them out equally and we're going to make sure that they go up at the same level each time. And there's no gap, major gaps or clusters going on. So we have a six, so I'm going to have mark off my six, and I'm going to make a dot over my six, and a five, a three, four, two five, a three, so this is where we need to go straight over from this other dot and make the three, a seven, a four, so again, straight across, we want to make sure they're all the same height another three, and another five. So here is our dot plot graph of the 11 students that scored baskets. So we have 11 dots, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So each of these dots represents a person. And a lot of people get confused on the number with the frequency and the number that the um, data represents. So let's ask a few questions about this. So how many people made five baskets? So we need to look at the five baskets and count one, two, three, four. Four people made five baskets. What was the most baskets somebody made? Now this is where a lot of sixth graders will be like, well, five, this is where the highest bar is. No, the question is asking, what is the biggest number of baskets made? The biggest number of baskets, baskets made is seven, okay? The lowest number of baskets made are three, okay? So you see the difference? This is the one where, this is where the most students made baskets at five, but the highest number of baskets was seven, and the lowest number of baskets made was three, okay? So you see the difference in the wording in the question, okay? And then how many people made four baskets or less? So again, that means I go to four baskets, and less. So I have one, two, three, four, five people that made four baskets or less. So that's how we can answer some questions using a dot plot. A dot plot is useful for these two things only. If I have a small range of data, okay? So what if I had like 20 baskets made? I wouldn't want to make a number line going from three to 20. I would choose a different graph to make, which is what we're going to talk about in the next two videos. Um, so you, it's a, a short range, short range of um, baskets. And if you have a lot of the same number, that's when a dot plot is the most useful to be used. All right, so there's my two main reasons on using a dot plot. Now, there are some vocabulary words that we use when we have a graph um, to describe our data and what's happening with our data. 
So here is a dot plot. Again, I've got from 1 to 11, so that's somewhat of a small range, and I've got a lot of the same ages, a lot of the same numbers. So that's why I, I drew a dot plot for this, um, for, for this type of data. I wouldn't be doing something else with this data. So there's, some, there's three words that we need to keep in mind when we're describing how data looks. Okay, so looking at this, Right here, I've already kind of bracketed off in green this kind of hole in between our data, between years 8 and 11. This is what we call a gap. There's no data between these two, no, these, three, these two numbers, so we've got some missing numbers, okay? Now, in this section, I have a lot of data. So in this section right here, this is what we would call a cluster. It's a bunch of data that is grouped together. Okay, so we have most of my cats are five years and younger. All right, then our last one is this guy way out here. Okay, he's kind of all by himself. It's just the only one. This will be called a stray value or an outlier. Okay, but that is what we call a stray. So when we're looking at data and we're talking about graphs, we are going to say, well, where do we see a cluster? Where do we see a gap? Are there any stray values, any outliers? So there's just a few of the vocabulary words that we'll be using with our dot plots, our histograms, and our block, box plots, which are in our next two videos.